says that she loves me Isn't it lovely when the one who loves me is the one who loves uh, Rachel Bittacoffer is here. So let's let's get the brass tacks here. Okay. Um, 50 years they had a plan. And I've been talking about this on the airwaves individually. Like we should have a 50 year plan for our life. Right. Even if we're not going to be here, especially if we're not going to be here, we should have a 50 year plan and a 100 year plan because that allows us to look at where we are right now and look into the future and kind of play in the future by right. planning now. Somehow the idiots, and they're not idiots, because when you think about the, the strategy, you think about the Southern strategy, you think about Lee Atwater, you yeah. think about uh, Ehrlichman, you think about, you know, folk that crafted domestic policies that saw into the future that set the table for Nixon and then Reagan, then Trump, like it's been a tee up all the way through, even if the people that they're appealing to are idiots, because they are. But they're also, and let me not call them names, because just because someone is intellectually damaged does not make them an idiot. It just means they've been used. They're tools. They've been they've been used by this. So what was the, when did the plan start? When did they realize when the was it when the Democrats became Republicans? <laughs> yeah, no, basically, that's it. I mean, the, the way. So when you look at electing Nixon back in, in uh, the 60s, right, the plan was, OK, we've had Democrat, the Democratic Party had a stronghold in the South so long as the Southern Democrats, the conservative white Southern Democrats, those are the people, right, were, were uh, racist segregationist. And then as soon as, you know, Kennedy and then LBJ moved to do federal, you know, federal legislation, the Civil Rights Act of 64, the Voting Rights Act of 65, and then by, you know, federal intervention intervention, direct intervention, putting federal people into the states, force them to register and allow black people to vote. Ever since then, there's been strategists in the Republican Party who've understood that, OK, white conservatives are for the picking and the way to pick them is to dog whistle on race. And, you know, we can't publicly say things like segregation now, segregation forever anymore. Right. But we can do things like school choice. Right. Oh, well, OK. <laughs> Which pause is basically there, pause, what that pause means. There. Right? Pause there, yeah. Rachel. So. School choice yep. equals segregation now, segregation today, yesterday, forever. I would argue, yes. School choice. Okay. Yes. Okay. What what give us a couple of others that equal make America great again? We, I think that should be in that category. <laughs> sure, too, yeah. That, no, we go means... through this. Yeah. In okay. the book, my co-author, I had a wonderful person that assisted me, a professional author, because this book to me was so important. This book to me is not about me, it's about you. Okay. It's about all the people in America who stand to suffer, and I mean really suffer, under a Republican autocracy, right? And so I, I had somebody help me make this book as digestible, because it is wonky material, as possible to, to regular readers who don't have my background. And, you know, in that book, we we walk through like some of the best things that they have done in terms of framing pro-life, obviously, is one of those, you know. Why, it, why is pro-life? Why is because pro-life actually spills over. I think there's some things like, you know, COVID that crosses borders. Right. I think right, right. pro-life is one of those things where you could get a great swath of black folk to get behind, you know, some some black folk that love the Lord. Right. Uh, black folk that uh, feel like, you know, men's rights are being usurped to get on board this you know, black folk who understand eugenics and Margaret Sanger. You know, you get black folk on board with this pro-life thing. Yeah. And, you know, here's where the brilliance of pro-life comes from. As soon as you're pro-life, what is your opponent? Anti-life. Anti Pro-death, right? Yeah. So or, it sets yeah, you right. up it, to own the moral high ground and yeah. to own it outright, right? So like, let's say I had been alive in the 70s and somebody had come to the table with, okay, well, let's counter pro-life with pro-choice. I'd have been like, okay, you want to counter the moral high ground of I'm standing on behalf of babies who right to live with I have a choice, which sounds reductionist, right? I mean, it makes you sound like you could be choosing the future of your economic health for the rest of your life or a drive through order, right? So it really does give a moral asymmetry that the, that the right was able to use over their 50 years of planning. And keep in mind, it's not just talking about shit they want to do, right? Their 50 years of planning involved recruiting a billionaire donor class, changing the campaign finance laws to allow that billion dollar, you know, billionaire class to, to really exert weight into the political spectrum and building all these infrastructures, ALEC and um, you know, Heritage Foundation and the Federalist Society and Judicial Watch to be able to pull it all together. 
And, you know, why we're sitting there telling people, well, they should have a choice. You should have a choice. Their argument is Democrats want to kill babies. And you're right, Karen. I would think, I would assume, you know, in, in, in any general election, you're about 90, 10 on the black vote, which, because black people aren't fucking stupid. Okay? Republicans think they are, but I'm here to say black folks are the smartest voters in the electorate. Okay. The smartest yes. voters in the electorate, and they can smoke. But wait, bullshit, wait. Republicans you know? know this, though, which is why they go to such lengths to undermine our vote, right? Yes. I'm listening to radical equations. And, you know, in the 60s, to, uh, you know, get registered in Mississippi, there were whole counties where people couldn't get registered yeah. because white violence yes. uh, precipitated the, you know, so they understand that Black voters are not stupid. They, so they use terrorism yes. and gerrymandering and Yes. And voter suppression and, you know, the laws any way they can, apartheid law making to keep black people from voting, which is why I'm so vigilant in like we have to vote, because if they did, if they didn't understand the power of the vote, they wouldn't go to these lanes to make exactly. sure. Exactly. Exactly. I told them. Um... A, a wonderful group of, of black students on campus. I did an event with them and I was like, listen, if your vote didn't matter, then why would the GOP spend millions of dollars every cycle trying to make sure you can't vote? <laughs> like, obviously it matters a lot, right? And well, you can tell that by their priorities. So yeah, um, you know, so, you know, getting getting back to the to the comparison of pro-life versus pro-choice, you know, we've, we've, we've been, in addition to not building this infrastructure, which, which the book is also, you know, going to cover extensively, we've allowed this messaging asymmetry to just get worse and worse and worse over the decades. And, you know, um, you know, is, is school choice a way to resegregate? I, I think it is, okay, I think it is a, a, a polite way to do it, but how are they selling it? They're selling it by saying, this is about helping minority students who are trapped in low performing school districts so that they can take their district money elsewhere, right? No, it isn't, right? So they're so insidious that when they come after black rights and women's rights, they usually argue that they're being helpful as they do it, so. 866-801-8255. Rachel Bittacoffer is here. Uh, the book is Hit Them Where It Hurts, How to Save Democracy by Beating Republicans at Their Own Game. I love it. I just uh, downloaded it. I'm going to be listening to it because uh, audio books are my jam now. Um, not, and I get to record it, but it's not It's not out till February. It's, not yet. it's pre-ordered Okay, now. so I pre-ordered. I pre-ordered the audio book. Thank I just you. wanted I before I hit that. Before I hit buy now with one click, I wanted to know if you were the voice because I, I want to hear you. And are you cussing on this? Because I need to hear Rachel Bittacoff for cussing on her uh, You know, we, we limited the F-bomb, I think, to just okay. a couple accentuated f <laughs> Okay, all right. Well, I, you know, I mean, you know, effects are effective when effectively <laughs> used. You just need them as, you know, punctuation, as you say. Yeah, you can't write an entire book throughout. about the Republican Party's political, you know, politics system without using the F-bomb at least twice, I would say. That I agree with. I agree. Okay, <laughs> so we, we got the messaging. The propaganda. So we, we, we've we identified the 50 years started around the Southern strategy and getting these Dixiecrat Democrats who were formerly McGovern and, you know, folk that love seg segregation and love lynching to now get on board with the Republican agenda. George Wallace, I'm sorry, not George McGovern. Thank you, Smith. George Wallace. What else? Because I feel like we react and I'm talking about all people. I'm not talking about black people, Republicans or Democrats, because, you know, I don't get into partisan politics. I think people react. People are more reactive. And what I'm looking at is this strategy puts you on your heels. So you're constantly having to defend yes. something that is ridiculous. Yes. Is that part of the strategy? Oh, yes. It's it's a, it's a and again, in the book, we talk we get a whole chapter on how does I mean, actually, there's, there's probably two or three chapters because it overlaps like. This is what they do. They take something like CRT, which is a fake issue. It's not even a real issue. And then it goes from something no one has ever heard of to the most important thing that we're talking about in an election in Virginia, right? How does that happen mechanically? Where did the idea come from? How does it get put into a political strategy? And how does it get deployed against us is covered in the book, right? And, you know, it's so important for people to understand the Republican Party its entire system is designed to put us on perpetual defense. And so you, the only way to win the game is to refuse to play. It's like war games, mutual, right? So what this book is teaching people to do is, is pivot and attack in a conversation on TV, on the Sunday shows, or in their political strategy. If they want to, to come after you about something with, you know, some bullshit issue about CRT and race in schools, 
the Republicans want to talk about education. I mean, that's our issue, right? And they have a terrible record on education. So it should have been like, you know, a bear claw trap, right? Oh, you want to talk education, Republicans? Let's have that conversation, right? <laughs> and then you just slam them, right? And it's scorched well, earth. I'm putting and a like- church finger up. I'm putting a church finger up. Here's the problem, Rachel. Mm-hmm. Here's the problem. First of all, for the last decade, cable news, which to your point, I stopped watching and I haven't missed anything, but I imagine there are things on a loop that people who watch it think are the things that are important and they're not. So I imagine they're not watching like China and Russia have come together and we're sending, you know, missiles to Alaska to make sure that like no one's talking about that around the clock on CNN, MSNBC or Fox, even though I'm concerned. I'm like, wait a minute, we're sending missiles to Alaska. Is is it about to go down? Like what's happening? I need to pay attention to our our credit rating. That's not around the clock. But these are the things that I'm watching and reading because I read the Financial Times. I'm not watching any cable news right now. Mm -hmm. So to your point, if you're in that silo, this is all you know. So let's 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 back up a little bit. Now, cable news, people on not experts, because I know I was on I was a paid contributor for three years. They would have me talk about things that I knew nothing about. Now you're on. You're an expert. But by and large, we're, we got two minutes to suss things out. That's not no, I time. Agree. Actually, I agree. I mean, the, the definition so, of expert is very loose on cable. Oh, my team. goodness. <laughs> so if, if 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 the bear claw is education, let's go. Yeah. How many people sitting there even know chapter and verse, uh, you know, all the Republican states where they're last in education, where yeah. kids can't read zero people passed uh, math, I think, in in the Bronx uh, this past year, like nobody passed math. Like, who knows the facts to be able to even hit them with that? So they're giving you something ridiculous that they know you're probably not going to come back because there are very few experts out there. Yeah, that and they just know that we're suckers for a good substantive conversation about policy. And we are because we got into government, uh, the people that I'm trying to help, (laughs) they got into government because they care about doing good things for people. Okay, and, you know, yes, there is money and all of this. But, uh, you know, why is Jamie Harrison the chair of the DNC? Because he cares about doing good things for people. Right. Like all these people get into a system and then they under then they figure out pretty quickly that the system isn't into these substantive policy conversations. Instead, it's all red meat, it's reductionist. And so what I'm trying to tell people, at least in this section of the book, is if you are so privileged to have the platform, because nobody watches cable news, Karen, even though you stopped and you had reasons, like beyond that, the cable news audience, guys, it's it's like a tenth of the entire American electorate. All of them, all three, even with their big ratings at Fox, right? If you combine them, it's still a very small portion of Americans who are interested in politics to the extent that they will watch cable news over tennis or whatever. Whatever, right. And so, you know, got trying to get people to understand, you know, if you have a, a meet the press appearance, it's like the value of, of 10 kilos of gold. And what you should do is do what Chris Christie does, whatever the topic is he turns it into an opportunity to brand Democrats, right? And we need to do that. Like, so when someone asks you what should be done to help these schools, my, you know, I get it. My heart says, well, let's have a deep dive conversation about why Common Core has failed. You know, No Child Behind, Left Behind has, has failed. You know, students are doing worse, not better over these last 20 years of academic reforms. Like that's, you know, I get the temptation to put that on TV, but what we need to be doing instead is using that to opportunity to pivot and attack and just tell people the re- reason your kids' education system sucks is because of the Republican Party. The Republican Party is has been gutting public education nonstop for 50 years, right? And you gotta, you know, gotta it's, it's not it's not fair to blame Ron DeSantis for the mortgage cr- or the property insurance crises. I mean, he has culpability because he's a climate denialist. And he stripped climate language out of all of the stuff in Florida, him and Rick Scott, the guy that came before him, who's now a senator there. Okay, so they have culpability. But really, do I really believe that Ron? it's Ron DeSantis's fault that no one can insure their property in Florida? I don't. But will I tell voters that? You bet I will, because voters do not understand. Well, it's this and this and this. And then Ron DeSantis did this thing. (laughs) You've got to keep it simple. Okay, yes. you can't insure your house because of Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis. <laughs> I love it. 
Come on, throw Rachel. <laughs> this is what I've been looking for. You are brilliant. Hit them where it hurts. I love this. Comes out February 6th. Of course, you're going to be back several times between now and February. But I want to get the, the table, you know, the, the ball rolling around. Appreciate just it. quick, it. easy, you know, giving people, you know, the tools and the weapons that they're going to need out here and to not take the bait, not take the because they want you talking about what they want you talking about. Yes. So you do the classic thing this is what I, I used to media train. So I would tell my clients, you know, if, if you are asked a question, you don't want to answer answer any question that you want to answer. Don't answer that question. And it'll confuse the question asker as a professional question asker. I, I, I'm i like, wait a minute, you won't get away with it with me. But 90% of the people who are asking yes. questions have no skill. So if they yes. ask you about your love life, you go, you know, I've been building these, these schools for children in Africa with the money. And I just want to really talk. You, know, you don't even have to say, no I really doubt. want to talk about this. Just start talking about what you want to talk about. And the Republicans are great at that. They, and that's exactly right. And it's not, no, no, it's just, it's not coming out of the womb with these talents, folks. Okay. They, that what happened was when talented evil people, I like to consider myself evil for goodness, but when talented evil people like myself were like, hey, you can manipulate people using these things, the Republicans are like, oh, that's a good idea. Let's invest billions of dollars and do it. <laughs> on our side it's like no we can't be evil and i'm like look we're all going to be dead or evil we can choose and i'm voting that the people that i mean i'm going to be gone guys i'm going to be in some other country living in exile okay it's not about me it's about all the millions of people that will never have the option to relocate somewhere else or flee for their political lives or whatever right so this fight it is time to hit them we cannot go high when they go low we got to kick them in the balls Right. I love that. I, that I, I, is low. I had a friend of mine who taught me a prison move. You you stomp on somebody's foot and then they're going to bend over ah. to grab their foot and then knee them in the nose. Dang, dude, that's a great idea. <laughs> Says that she loves me. Isn't it lovely when the one who loves thing is the one?